Cords and coffee number six. Mm. Last drop of coffee. I was thinking about you the other day. I was playing something in the key of B, and I did this thing that I do a lot, this little... And I thought that'd be a cool thing to, to share with y'all if you um, don't use that. And here's what it is, is if you remember in our uh, episode four, the Lydian episode, there was a moment there where we were doing the, uh, the Mama, I'm coming home thing. And those two shapes, and I think at that time, you know, we, we were doing E major descending. And we were talking about this as shape number one, and this is shape number two. And essentially what you have here is kind of an F chord shape. You with me? Good old cowboy F. Slid all the way up here to the 12th fret, and then we get rid of everything but the high E and the G. And so the high E is on the 12th fret, and the G is on the 11th fret, right? And the B, you could do it open in this case. But just thinking about the two strings we're touching, if this is number one and then 11 and 11 is shape number two, those are thirds, right? So G sharp and E. G sharp is a third in E. And um, those two little devices, those two little shapes will get you all the way down the major scale, right? Well, it's not just in the key of E. And it's not just for a major sound. All this is tying together, because if you remember in lesson number one, we were doing something over G7, right? And we were doing like an E minor to D minor over G7 that was birthed out of the C major scale. Well, that thing I just did for you is essentially a D major scale over an A in these thirds harmonized and i'll show it to you right now so first of all i'm starting here with good old two finger a7 look at that a faithful friend and you can do it with these two fingers or your two fingers in the middle so that you got this rock and roll thing going I, it doesn't matter whatever feels more comfortable to you and then this would be you know what we were thinking of as position number one or another way to think about it is like a c major chord and it's just these two guys right here right slid up and I'm doing it with these fingers because it just I don't know why it just feels more comfortable to me so and then this is, is the you know position number two on the fifth fret so two one two and then seventh fret the same shape and then you come up here to the eighth fret with the position number one and then uh, tenth fret with that same one and then twelfth fret with position number two and then 14 fret don't know why i'm singing it with position number two again so the whole thing and you probably played this before like that kind of thing was that steppenwolf gosh darn the pusher right but what's cool about that is Or Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um. Another suitcase in another hall. I don't know why I know that, but I do. Anyway, it's really handy. I do it all the time. And the D chord resolve that I did was, again, good old cowboy F. But this time, slid all the way up to the 12th fret. And if you don't do this D chord, you should. This is really pretty. And I'm just playing the B on the 10th fret. And the G string on the 11th fret, open E, open D string, and honestly, go ahead and throw that open A in there. That's so pretty. So next time you're playing something in the key of D, that's a cool big fat A7 thing you can do to get you to that D chord, but there's a lot of uh, return on investment from those two shapes. So if I'm just... Just kind of noodling around here in, in E, just because I want the open string. Why not? 
not major or minor four. Yeah, so like there's a good little pretty noodle thing here. So I'm doing like a like a B major chord. And these little shapes like this will allow you to harmonize a melody if you're doing like a, a solo guitar arrangement or if you're playing a passage, um, you know, uh, you're trying to boister up a chorus or a pre-chorus or a verse or something like that. I mean, there, there's a lot of examples. I mean, Brown Eye Girl, right? Peace Train. Something like that. Anyway, there's a lot of examples where those two shapes come up all the time. And what's cool is, is because of the way the guitar is tuned, if you're tuning, you know, in a normal tuning style, either standard or E flat or whatever, but if it's at the same intervals, you've got these shapes, not just on the top two strings, but on the bottom two strings too. And I guess, I mean, there's some interesting things down there. Is that jazz? I don't know. But anyway, okay, I'll show you how to play this little thing I just made up here. So on the B with an E in the bass, I'm playing the E on the seventh fret, and I've got this good old um, seven and eight on the B and G string with my index finger on the A string. Not playing the D string at all, B string is open. Then an open A string, and then nine and nine, and then down here. And then four. And then readjust very quickly with these two fingers, and then grab the B on the A string. And then down to the second fret with the B still here. And then I went to this, which is like a G sharp. But again, just these two here. E string, G string on the um, fourth and fifth with C on the third fret of the A. And then up to the ninth fret. And then we went down to that B minor. So ninth fret on the low E, ninth fret on the G and the E, seventh fret on the low E, seventh on the seven on the G and E, and then keep that guy there, but put that A in the bass. And then fifth and sixth, and then make it minor. Ooh, minor four. And then down to here. And then B again. And sustain and there's just a ton of pretty stuff you can do like that I, I like to I don't know I guess in my old age here not really old but older you know I'm starting to get more sentimental and playing stuff like that but try that sometime if you've got a tune especially if it's something you're working on or you're writing or if you got to play a solo and it's a simple melody instead of just playing you know which there's nothing wrong with that you might try it just, it, it feels like adding someone singing harmony with you. And that's the whole point. We want to sing on this thing as much as we can. Hope this helps you. I hope you're having fun. Leave a comment below if you've got an idea for a future episode. I'm all ears. I would love to do my best to attempt to answer that question or to at least engage thought in that direction. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you next time.